<sighs> Morning, everybody. About 10 minutes late. Sorry about that. I had to, uh, I sat down, had to answer some emails first thing this morning. We must act. Getting some art updates from our artist on the uh, cover for our point and click adventure game. And, uh, they had misunderstood a couple of sections of the first brief, so yesterday I had to give them some instructions. And then um, this morning they turned in a uh, picture that was a sketch that was perfect, so I had to let them know they're on the right track. I like the sound of that. Take toughness and athletics. So I took on the other character. So this this is the divination line. That's nice for um, casting encounters. I'm going to take that actually. Go ballistics and awareness. He's not really ever using his uh, ranged. Let's try that. Cool. So I think that process right there that we just wrapped up is the perfect example of how, how much complexity there is in Warhammer 40k. Um, or at least for what I've been, you know, I've been learning this system from scratch through the Rogue Trader beta. And obviously they have a, you know, an interpretation of the tabletop rules, so I don't know if it's 100% accurate. But I can say that I made a video the other day when I, I think it was the Adept Overview video I did, which was kind of the basics of the Adept class or the doctrine they're using. And I, I had two examples, but this time around, I've got three Adepts in my party right now, and they all play dramatically different. Like, dramatically different. Pascal is like, he can get up in there and do some melee damage. Um, and he's got, like, if we look at his abilities, we got the disability attack that they all get. I just got intimidation with him. His AOE that he does is pretty awesome. Um, it's, it's pretty good. But then I have Yadira, and she's divination. And so she's doing stuff from a distance way better than he does. And she has this instant expose weakness. So she can attack. Then she can do study enemies. Then she can, bam, hit one of them with expose weakness all at the same time. It's crazy. So that's that's the way she does it. And then my character is also in it. But I went the biomancy route. Um, which is technically what... Um, I forget the character's name that we meet next. Ooh, he's the Inquisitor. Heinrichs? I think it's called Heinrichs. 
And when you get me him, he's another biomancer. And he's got other stuff that he does. I just feel like the depth of choices they give you when you're leveling up your doctrines is just... It's, it's really good. I mean, you go through here and there's just so many abilities that you could choose that are available, you know, and depending on what you play, there's different availabilities. It's it's extremely, extremely complex. I'm very pleased with this. Doubt is for the weak. I'll lay claim to the start. Time to talk to the governor. Ooh, excuse me. It's early, everybody. I literally wake up with y'all on stream because I get up, feed the cats, make sure all the boys are inside. A little bit of medication, and then I come straight in to uh, sit down. So you're going to get yawns in the morning. Governor Medina, the tall, dark-haired man, turns towards you and greets you in a curt military manner. I'm governor of this star system. Welcome to my temporary headquarters. The man's gaze rests on Abelard. His eyes narrow a little bit. We're Serian. Abelard and Arn Stradley. Governor Medina, my greetings. The governor says, I'm not seeing the convoy I sent to meet you. What happened? Have they failed to find and escort you? If that is so, I promise you their punishment will be swift and severe. Actually, they were ambushed and massacred. The only surviving one turned out to be a traitor. I took care of him. That's an outrage. I will immediately give the order to change the procedure for the personnel background checks. The slightest suspicion will be grounds for arrest. Your Lordship, before we proceed to discussing the matters that are of interest to you, there is a question I feel compelled to ask. It was only recently that Lady Theodora was head of house for Long Blancius. I've received no word of her death. How is it that you are now the rogue trader? Her ship was attacked, she was killed, and I claimed my inheritance. End of story. The governor frowns and a deep shadow falls over his face. Slain? Unthinkable. Please accept my deepest and most sincere condolences, your lordship. Tell me how I could be of help. Uh, my ship's crew has taken heavy losses. I would like to replenish it on Reich and Minoris. I can offer you several thousand heads of fine obedient servants, but I'm sad to say I won't be able to do it until I deal with the insurgency on the planet. The rabble will soon be duly punished for their heretic screaming. Scheming. Heretic. 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 Heretic screaming. All right, looking for Heinrichs. Ooh. The governor lowers his voice. I do indeed know of Mr. Von Kallax. He left for the hallowed electrodynamic synobium. It's an ancient monastery of the Deptus Mechanicus. I don't know what his goals are. Obviously, the insurgents' movements have been observed in the monastery vicinity, but I suppose that's too petty of a problem for an agent of the host Holy Inquisition. Besides, I've already sent small reinforcements to the region. The weapon the insurgents used to shut down shuttles over the city was destroyed. Thanks to me, I took out that big old gun. If you wish to find Mr. Von Kallax, you should go to the Cenobium. Hints of anxiety creep into the voice from Pascal's Vox. On behalf of the priesthood of Mars, I, Magus Hanuman, am officially initiated my participation in this excursion. I must inspect the state of the relic and, ensure, and assure myself that it is under zero risk of falling into heretical hands. According to the Catechism of Operation and Maintenance, my tech brethren were supposed to lock the monastery gates for the lay people and activate the traps. I deem it optimal that an ordained major should be involved in effecting these countermeasures. Governor raises his eyebrow and stares at the tech priest in surprise. Are you Hardiman? Uh, gl glad you're alive. Alright. 
Pascal, what's so special about the Cenobium the relic? I've never been there before, but I would presume that the sacred relic of the reactor is capable of great destruction should it end up in the heretic's hands. The fury of those loose machine spirits, once released from the sacred circuit, will destroy everything around it. The damage that would be inflicted, but could rid of the world of Riken Manor is no longer habitable. Heresy must be expelled from those blessed chambers. I deem any desecrator who covers the relic's power a Category 3 blasphemer, punishable by death on the spot. Okay, wow. That's, uh, intense. Pascal wants to know why his name aroused interest from the governor. The governor looks at him curiously. According to the reports we have, Lodges Abel Hanneman set off the hallowed electrodynamic synobium a short while before it was stormed. I'm glad to find you're safe. Perhaps you have information on Mr. Van Kallox. Ooh, we have a... Ah, he says... Oh, confusing him. My name is Pascal Hanneman, not Abel. And I know nothing about that man. Huh. Why did he fly there? That seems suspicious. When the largest of the Adeptus Mechanicus wants to go somewhere... You don't ask why, Lordship. I see. Hmm. So Pascal thinks this might be the... It could could be an alias of his mentor, the Archmage's Armanat. Uh, um, sorry, I butchered that. Amarnat. Okay. So... Note the courage of one of your officers. Definitely, um... I think we're good. Oh, no. If you see... Yeah, if you see Conrad Voitver, hand him over. Voitver's a traitor. But any family, however noble, has its unworthy sky in the two. Naturally, we hand him over if we find it within my jurisdiction. Unfortunately, I have no data as to his location. However, the governor pauses to think. We have a cogitator here at the command center to which a data crypt for the Lodge's Able Sanctum is connected. It aggregated all Lex Mechanic reports. Unfortunately, its access probes are known to me. If you manage to wrangle this type of machine, you might find something on Conrad's movements. But I'd presume he fled from your ship. Not a pair of wings. You know what? They mentioned at the spaceport that they saw a shuttle detached from my ship just before we landed, and I wonder if that's... Is this the machine? The cogitator looks a lot older and shabbier than the ones next to it, but it's evidently been taken good care of. Numerous parts have been replaced and not a single key is jammed. Fresh seals with prayers of the Messiah adorn its surface. Um, one of the side panels has been removed. Bundles of gold notched cables extend from its insides to a small data crypt that was connected only a short while ago. Awaiting code entry. So it's been raining a lot, and we're getting bugs. There's a flying ant in here right now. It's supposed to rain again today. Tech use zero. Hack it. All right. We got past its defenses. It is ready to share its secrets. Pascal leans forward and runs his fingers over the keys. The screen blinks and responds with a string of unknown characters. I have petitioned the machine spirit to open Lodges Abel's personal archives at well. It accepted my requests. All right, go to the lodge. Okay, go to the private archive. Results of the lodge's Abel's data trance. I cannot see the secret design, but I can sense it, shackled in the stasis, in the neural harness of their vows, the minds of the initiated are in reverie. I am registering an impulse of change. I surmise a potential influence on the stasis of the secret design. There came a time when the spiral was turned into a circle, but the cycle can be discontinued. This revelation granted by the Omnissiah to the Lodges Abel in the course of his data meditation has been recorded verbatim. Lodges Abel is seeking a meeting with the venerable Dar Impulse Six, who may, be, who may assist in interpreting the revelation. A request has been sent to the Governor's Palace for a shuttle flight to the Electrodynamic Synobium. A message has also been sent to the Ferrabunda system. Okay. The cycle can be discontinued. I recognize the words. The voice for the Vox is soft and pensive, barely audible over the static. I believe I know who is the recipient. As the message was the Furbunda sent him. It was me. Omnissiah, oh, grant me the wisdom to comprehend this mystery. These words are challenging to read. First thing in the morning with no coffee. 
for abundance. All right. Let's check out the sacred computation. Upon Logis Abel's orders, the archives of every auger station have been queried on Riken Menorahs and two primary satellites in stellar orbit around Riken. Said satellites are satellites are named Magos, Maruf, and Zephyr the Keen. After two great champions of faith, whose external cogitators were posthumously placed inside the satellite's cores. The purpose of the sacred computation requested by the Logis is to uncover an external influence beyond the present insurgency. There is a positive result. Multiple instances of interference and malfunction detected, suggesting a deliberate blinding of the sacred auger's eyes by ships moving across the system. The first was brought in about two cycles ago early in the winter, the most recent a month ago. Conclusion. The insurrection has been long in the making. It was alleged that two cycles ago, Aurora arrived in the system. That's that person's name we've been hearing. Their unholy prophet, of whom rumors have reached us. Subsequent ship movements can be explained as weapons deliveries. But we still don't know the nature of their activity near Rykid Philia. Recent observations. A ship's translated into the system. Its signature is consistent with records of the flagship. House von Blankis, that's my ship. Yeah, a nearby drifting ship has sped away in a hurry. The ship sent an encrypted Vox transmission to an insurgent controlled area on the surface of Riker Benoris. A second was directed toward uh, Rikati Philia. Both transistors were signed Brother Twilight. We could not decrypt. 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 Heavy auger jam, impossible hidden insurgent base. Alright, I think we've gotten everything we need from there. This is the Tech Priest. He's a trade representative. Oh, is this where we learned for the first time about um, trading? Hmm. Show me your arsenal. Yeah, this is the tutorial part. So, this is a great time to talk about this because someone was asking me yesterday during the stream. Um, about the loot because I seem to be looting so many things and my inventory was like they were like oh my god that inventory management must be a nightmare and the discussion was actually everything I'm looting isn't just going into my inventory um, a lot of it goes into your cargo space so there's two different inventories essentially there's your ship cargo and there's your personal inventory and as you loot weapons and things they go into your inventory and they'll stack, so you could start looting the same type of las gun or, or pistol or sword or flak jacket, and they just stack up. And all this other stuff that you loot, trophies and the like, in these cases, those are the cargo that go into your ship. And you could, you could also take those stacks of weapons and things in your inventory and move them into the cargo, and they count as like munitions or ranged weapons or armor. You know, there's all these different types of things in your cargo, which we'll see here in a minute. Um, and this is the tutorial on profit factor and trading. So essentially, um, profit factor is your status. It, it says it represents the status, wealth, and power of the rogue trader, determined by trade connections, holding incomes, treasury loans, and borrowings. While you are traveling, your character will use profit factor for buying everything from grenades and weapons to planetary colonies. You don't actually spend profit factor on purchases and transactions. Uh, but its level does determine the ability to make a trade transaction or to pass certain checks. So that's a number that just goes up as you grow in levels and your reputation grows and everything else. Um, so when you start off, it's going to be smaller, and as you become more important, it gets bigger. But it's just a ranking. It's like a faction rating, sort of. It's not quite the same thing, but it is a rating that affects you know, um, your ability to make those transactions right so it's a it's a little bit of a complex system because then there's reputation there's actual reputation that factors in next so equipment weapon and other items can be found at vendors of various factions throughout the coronas expanse to trade with them you need profit factor but you also need reputation um these are not spent on purchases but their level 
one or both at the same time, <laughs> this is the complexity, can impact the range of goods available to you and whether or not you can purchase them. Reputation is a measure of the rogue trader's relationship with the factions of the Cronus Expanse, whereas the profit factor is sort of like your overall reputation. The higher the reputation of the faction, um, the wider the range of goods available from the representative of that faction. And then if you want to increase your reputation with the particular faction, you get to transfer valuable cargo to the representatives or complete its orders. So there's multiple ways but when you're going into the trade window, which we're going to do right now, um, this is where we actually get to see all of this in action. This is a cool time to... I'm, I'm glad this popped up this morning because I was wanting to do a video on this and it naturally happened upon us. So um, right away you're going to notice this window pops up and there's a trade window and a reputation window. So let's talk about the trade window first. So we have RP, which is reputation. And then we have PF, which is profit, your profit factor. So if we understand what was just said a minute ago, um, each item has a profit factor minimum that you have to hit and a reputation minimum that you have to hit. So this one requires six PF, profit factor, and zero rep. So I can buy these items right now because I've met the... Uh, there's zero rep requirements, so we don't have any rep requirements for those. And I've met the uh, profit factor, right? Which it looks like I have at least 10. Now, you'll notice that this one's grayed out, this modified laser gun, and that's because I don't have enough profit factor yet. Um, I, ha I haven't earned enough of a reputation worldwide. You know, I'm not famous enough yet. Um, so, I can't access those, but what I can access are these ones like I could buy some more med kits which I'm definitely gonna do because those are hi highly important and hard to find um, I'm not gonna buy the armor um, grenades I might grab the grenades too those are also hard to come by well if I can get this box to come over there we go all right but what if I want rank 2 stuff? It says I need 1,500 RP. I need 1,500 faction. I'm going to go over here to the reputation tab. And this is the cargo that I was talking about earlier. This is all in your ship's cargo hold. And what you could do is you can go through here and click on some of these. You know, if they have an X, you know, ignore it. But look for the ones that um, are empty and that you can click and get a check mark. You notice they have percentages, 102%, 119%, 112%. So that's just how much is in my cargo hold. So let's just go through and click five of these. And let's watch the faction level up top when I click complete. Nothing. There we go. I had to click it twice. That gave me 1,250 faction. So let's do another couple. Let's do two more. Not, not quite enough. Let's try three more. There we go. That got me to 2050. Um, so I'm I'm over that mark and I'm on my way to 3,000. If I go back to the trade window, I now have access to the rank two items. However, I don't have enough profit factor to purchase any of these items. But there's a bolt pistol, some stabilizing bracers, a helmet. I like the helmet and the bracers. And some fire grenades. Um, I am going to purchase the fire grenades. Because always purchase grenades. And I'll have to wait until my profit factor is higher to do any of the other things. Um, so that's a basic explanation of how that works. And if you scroll down, at least at the beta, we can see there's three tiers of items that I can purchase. But I noticed that when I was leveling up the other day, I just was throwing everything I had at a merchant just to test the system. Um... And there's actually more than um, three tiers of relationships. So I'm assuming that when you get into the live game, we're going to see four, five, six, seven ranks. Who knows? Maybe more ranks of items that the merchants can have, potentially. So it's way more than just three. Um, but it only shows three ranks worth of items in the beta. Oh, I guess there's even numbers here, which I didn't even notice until I was just sitting here right now. So it does go to seven. 
<laughs> We're learning something new this morning, everybody. Welcome to the Twitch stream, Necro. Don't forget, we are multi-streaming on YouTube. And I just caught your chat, too. I wasn't even paying attention. Sorry about that. And uh, Necro says, um, first time I've caught you live, your videos have been great. Well, thank you for that. Appreciate it. Yeah, most of the days, most days I'm live, 5.30 in the morning for about an hour and a half as I wake up with everybody. And then 8 p.m. Central when we're wide awake and playing at the end of the day. So we do two streams a day. And sometimes I'll do an afternoon stream, but it depends on how much video production I have to get done. Because uh, YouTube is my main gig, and streaming is like a side thing. The rest, but most of the time I'm just doing content creation. But I have started streaming with regular intent since we started multi-streaming on Twitch. Like, I guess a month ago? Because for the first couple of years, I mostly was just doing content creation and uh, occasional streaming on YouTube. But now I'm actually doing streaming regularly. Anyway, folks, um, that is an overview of the profit factor and reputation system uh, for dealing with merchants that you come across in the world um, as a rogue trader. It's a very interesting system, and it seems more complex than it is because of the fact that it has like two different things being applied to it. You've got two different reputation systems, essentially. Fame, I guess, would be one way to look at it. Um, and then your actual reputation per vendor. Um, and then I was just talking about earlier, you can look at your cargo. Oops, wrong button. You can see your cargo in your ship like this when you're out. And then if you have stacks of items like this, we can take this flak chest plate and drop it over here. And it's going to it's gonna be armor kit that goes up. No, I don't know which one just went up. Um, let's look at um, melee weapons. I've got three more. Oh, I guess they're just going up now. Okay. But anyway, you can stash all your items here. If you don't need items. If you're not going to use them. Hold on to the gloves. Uh, I, I've got a better sniper rifle. I'm not using bolt weapons. Or stub carbines. Or shotguns. Or swords. I do want to give those gloves to somebody, and I need to check the uh, armor. Anyway, the stream continues onwards, but if you're watching this in episodic format on the YouTube channel, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. See you in the next one. Necro says, I find the urge to get the beta. I mean, yeah, if you're just playing the game as the average layperson, just wait till it launches. You've only got another week. The only reason I started the beta was uh, because from a content creator's perspective, I could start doing R&D, <laughs> learn the game, learn the system, put out videos, do some Let's Play sessions, start getting the algorithm familiar with my face on YouTube, and then get people used to the fact that I'm going to be streaming this game at live, and then uh, roll right into that. I don't... I haven't done any... Um, like, I know, like... Um, Mort Mortimus Gaming, I think, is his channel's name. He's he's got his hands on a uh, on an actual preview copy. He's like he's got like two hundred thousand plus YouTube subscribers. He's a big content creator in the CRPG space, and I, he was able to get his hands on a on a pre-launch copy from um, from Alcat, and he's been putting out guides that cover like the live game, um, and that's the perk of you know, having been doing this for many, many years as he has. Um, whereas I'm coming into things, I'm only, I'm only two years into full-time content creation. I only have like 20, a little over 20,000 followers on my YouTube channel. So I'm still a small fish. Even though I do this full full time, I am a small fish in that scope. So the beta has a lot of great information, but I would also say check out Slandered Gaming and Mortissimal Gaming because they're both doing really good, uh, rogue trader guys as well. And they're going to be, they're going to be, um, playing this at launch as well. Um, 
they're the only two that I know of that are going to be playing this at launch, but they're also doing very good guides. So I would say get your fix right now, Necro, from checking out myself and those two guys. And uh, just wait a week. It'll be out on the 7th. It's so close. It's so close. Welcome to the channel, Zocker. Welcome to Twitch. Don't forget we're multi-streaming on YouTube and Twitch. Daily at 5.30 a.m. Every evening at 8 p.m. Pick your poison. There's also a Discord down below, everybody. And we do have a World of Warcraft guild if you want to play with our community. Follow the links. You'll find out all that information out. Um, anyway, um, the beta has some quirks. Not everything's finalized, you know, so... But you can see some contrast between all the various, you know, videos that are being created between content creators. Um, yeah, the beta, I would, I would say, is mostly just a... A research tool. Some people play it like it's a live game, but I just I try to. Yeah, I view it as a. Let's play different classes. Let's get an overview of the mechanics. Let's learn all of the systems. Um, I knew nothing about Warhammer lore starting this game, so I've had to learn a lot of Warhammer stuff. And they've got a great. Um, the the codex in this game is is. It's freaking amazing. Um, so there's been tons of information to dive into here and learn about the lore of Warhammer. Um, and then the mechanics, are as complex as they are, like you just saw the tutorial that we just went through for the um, profit trading and, and reputation system. They've got a good set of tutorials here um, in this game. All right, we do need a quick save here. And back to the void ship. 